and welcome. David Levin here, Raising Your Game today. This is Tuesday, so we're talking sports, playing sports, and helping kids who play sports. The subject today is funk, specifically how to get out of a funk. I was talking with a coach the other day. He coaches beach volleyball. I was asking him what sort of mental game issues he sees, and he said they get into a funk and they can't get out. And I thought, funk? I love funk. Who would want to get out of that? <laughs> My first musical love was the Beatles. I wanted to be a Beatle uh, for sure. And I thought maybe I should be. But I was like eight years old, so, you know. Later, middle school, it was funk. I was into it. All my friends were into it. It was on the radio. It was just the music of the time and at the age when music is huge in your life. So, oh boy, I love funk. Tower of Power, Cool and the Gang, Ohio Players, Sly and the Family Stone. My goodness, great memories. And there goes the old guy reminiscing again. But no, you're right. That's not what he meant. Get out of a funk. He meant take a shower. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, he didn't mean that either. What he meant, of course, was they get into a state that's hurting their game, a mental state. They get upset or distracted. They're stuck in their head. They lose their confidence. Their game falls apart. And they don't know how to get out of that funk. I was watching the women's Wimbledon final this last weekend. Ons Jabour, number two rank in the world. I know of her because of the Netflix documentary I've talked about before, Breakpoint. She was the favorite in the match. Seemed like everyone was rooting for her, as was I. And she sort of just broke under the pressure. You could see it in her body language. The confidence was gone, the anger at herself, and it spirals down. She makes a mistake, misses a shot, she gets mad, tightens up, makes another mistake, gets more mad, and down it goes. And it was sort of heartbreaking to watch. But this is basically the exact same problem I see with every athlete out there, from the best in the world to the 12-year-old kid I just finished up with last week. It's the same problem. Something goes wrong, we get into our head, our game suffers, we can't get out. So how do you get out of a funk other than turning off your stereo <laughs> or jumping in the shower? Oh, I can't help myself. First, you have to understand and recognize what's going on in there, what specifically is pulling you into your head. And basically, it's the thoughts that come up when something goes wrong. Thoughts and feelings are like super powerful magnets. When a thought comes up, it pulls us into our head and it's very hard to resist that pull. We start thinking about it, we debate it, we argue with it, we get angry at it, we go round and round and round. It all happens in our head by definition and we are stuck there. That's what's happening. So once you see that clearly, now you get to the second piece, which is you simply notice the thoughts as they arise and then choose not to engage with them, not to get pulled into the bait in the first place. That's how you get out of a funk. The thought comes up, you say, nope, not now, and you are back. And that is exactly what people <laughs> learn how to do in our Raise Your Inner Game Sports Academy training. So that's how you do it. Here's how not to do it. Think about it some more. <laughs> that is the problem with the other typical mental game training approaches. If you work with a sports psychologist, for example, they are going to encourage you to think about your negative, unhelpful thoughts. They'll say things like, yeah, that's why you need to not think that in those situations. And it might be a good suggestion, but it's not that helpful because it doesn't tell you how. You know, you probably know already it's not a helpful thought. Thank you very much. Tell me how to keep from thinking it. And in order to think about those thoughts, again, by definition, you have to be in your head. You might work on a visualization, coming up with a beautiful image to hold in your mind of you performing perfectly in the moment. But notice what I said you do with that image. You hold it in your mind. Visualization also happens in your head. If you want to get out of your head, which is what you want to do, and do it quickly, you need a different approach. Anyway, that is what I wanted to talk about today, how to get out of a funk during a game. The key 
is to notice the thoughts as they come up and keep them from pulling you into your head. All right, if you play sports and want to boost your mental game or you have kids in sports, check out our mental game starter kit. It's a great set of resources to help anyone take their mental game to the next level. Just go to raiseyourinnergame.com, scroll to the bottom. You can learn about it and register there. It's all free, of course. We also offer private and group coaching you learn about at the site. If you like what you heard on today's show, please do tell your friends, invite them to join us, and rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to pods. That's how new people find the show so they can get the mental help, mental game charge uh, we all need. If you'd like to support the show so we can keep things ad-free, please click the Buy Me a Coffee link below and thank you for that. If you are listening to the audio and you like video, we post all our episodes on YouTube as well. Or if you just like to listen to audio in the YouTube app, that works as well. Uh, there's a link to that in the show notes. Finally, we'll close with Steve Prefontaine and his quote from the end of the Raise Your Inner Game book. To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice your gift. That's what we're doing. We're working to be our best, help our kids be their best, both on and off the field. So keep up the good work, and we will see you next time.